into order. Say we will present please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Welcome to new spaces, a different corner of the room, but still our corner, right? That's true. Okay, this is the portion of the meeting that's reserved for public comment. Anyone here wishing to make public comment? Seeing none, we will move on to the consent agenda items. Approval of the minutes of the August 27th board meeting and statement of receipts and expenditures for August 2018. The motion to approve those consent agenda items. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by aye. 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 Opposed? that motion passes so moving on action items and reports superintendent's report yes so the last time that we met was our um, first day with staff so we just had our first day with staff and since then um, we've had the beginning of our school year and we've had a great start to our year and I really want to um, show appreciation to our teachers um, in a typical summer they're coming in over the summer throughout the summer getting the rooms ready prepping doing all those pieces, but with our construction projects that were occurring, um, none of them were able to get into that classroom until um, either that 27th or even some of them not till the 28th. And so that it was really a condensed amount of time that teachers were able to get into their classrooms. Um, and so if you're an EC through fifth grade or a ninth through 12th grade teacher, um, they had to put a lot of hours into it in a short amount of time. And, I was, I was joking with one of the teachers that it was probably the same amount of time that she would put in in a typical summer, but it just happened to be like in a four day window. Um, and so there's a ton of people that were in here late hours that week into the weekend, um, even into that following week, people in late hours into the weekends, getting things ready. And I just really, we're really fortunate to have just a dedicated group of teachers that really work to make um, learning happen for our kids on the first day of school. Um, there's still some things that are occurring, you know, with construction projects, and there's even still some unpacking that's occurring in various classrooms. But teachers really were ready for kids, made that, that learning experience on the first day very positive for our kids. And I really want to just thank our teachers for um, the dedication that they showed to our, to our students, to our community, um, and to each other. Um, and I just want to make sure their, their extra effort was noticed and appreciated um, by administration. And I know the board echoes that as well. So um, that, was a, that was a great thing. Um, and then, uh, Kara, if you can bring up that, the first couple slides there. Um, on Friday the 14th, um, we had all of our elementary students um, 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 pose together for a picture with their new t-shirt um, in their school colors. So our slogan for the year is United is One, Learning Together. So as we brought three elementary schools to two, um, we, um, as we were meeting with parents last year, um, Michael and Craig and I meet with, with the parent groups from the three schools talking about transition ideas from moving from three to two. One of the ideas that we had was to have a, a t-shirt for all students and staff that would be in their colors. Um, so kids would be able to start the year with a school t-shirt um, that would go with that. So we have um, the same logo on all of them, but you have Woodview that's going on here. And the next one would be Kennedy um, with, their, with their staff and student picture on that Friday the 14th. So um, great way to celebrate um, schools coming together, um, no matter where they were at last year, whether they're at Kennedy or at Woodview or GES, whatever it may be. You know, here we are now in a year where United is one learning together. Um, so uh, it's a great way to start the year. And then as we go on throughout the year, as we have uh, spirit wear days, they at least have something um, immediately to wear um, and was very favorably received um, by all of our students and families. So, um, and we really, families had to register when they'd register for their students, they had to choose sizes. And we literally, it was less than like a dozen that we had to follow up with. Parents were very responsive, right? It was a small number. Um, we may have had more staff members forget to register than, than students, ironically. Um, but a great opportunity to, to start the year on a positive note with our school colors in that way. And then this week, it's homecoming week at the high school. And so a lot of activities going on at the high school, pajama day today. Um, as you walk through, you'll see some of the different window decoratings they did over the weekend. Um, so the theme this, this week is Hollywood premiere. Um, so each day, they have float building and powder puff practice occurring um, each night, started tonight. Um, and then the festivities really kick off on Thursday night uh, with the parade starting at 7 o'clock from St. John's parking lot. And then following the parade, they'll make their way to the high school. They have their pep rally 
and the powder puff game at the stadium field. So under the lights of the juniors and seniors playing powder puff. And then Friday um, night is the football game at seven o'clock versus Hartford. Um, we typically have our Hall of Fame ceremony and um, the recipient of this year's Hall of Fame was not able to um, make it, uh, that, that, that game, that, that Friday didn't uh, fit with her schedule. So Scott is working with her and her family to pick a day in November or December, and I'm not sure if he has a, a final date yet, but they're picking a, a basketball game that, that um, her and her family can be here. Um, she wanted everyone to be able to be here. She takes great pride in being a Blackhawk and wants to make sure we celebrate that appropriately. So instead of celebrating without her, we're obviously gonna hold off on that and pick a time that's conducive to her and her family. So um, that leads us at five o'clock though on Friday night, we will have our um, rededication ceremony at the high school. We'll have it, we'll start in the commons. And then from there, Scott has um, 10 different students that will be giving either student council students or, or class officers that will be giving tours um, at the high school um, to various locations throughout the thing. And then seven o'clock is when the football game starts. Um, and um, so then we have, so then following up with that, we have the next item here is the school board, uh, Wisconsin School Board Week. And um, on October 7th through the 13th is Wisconsin School Board Appreciation Week. And um, we are very fortunate to have a um, supportive, um, hardworking school board that puts the interest of kids first. And we want to take that opportunity to thank you on behalf of our community for all the extra hours that you put in. You know, we at the annual meeting we hear it's, you know, $1,350 and $1,450 for the year. And I, I don't want you to compute the hourly um, aspect to that um, because then you might not run again. Um, but we do know it, it does take countless hours listening to community members, working with our staff, coming to meetings, um, but being visible in the community, hearing people's input. Um, you know, the referendum is an example of that, taking input from people and working towards a, a common goal. Um, so we wanna make sure we appreciate you in that way. And so we have a, a press release that we're releasing tomorrow um, going out to the newspapers, but in it, in it we'll say, the members serving our district and their years of service are as follows. Board President Paul Lorgi with 17 years, Vice President Kerry Walls with five, Kirk, Clerk Joe Mayo with three, Treasurer Mark Kaler with three, Steve Nada with two, Jerry Rossi with two, and John Skolman with one. Um, and they'll be recognizing you on our electronic sign during the week of uh, October 7th through the 13th. We'll be giving individual messages from administrators and staff. And then we also have a special gift of a caramel apple from Sweet Trio um, at the September 24th board meeting. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to have you get into a group here and Kara's gonna take a picture of you with your caramel apple. And then we will send that along to um, both News Graphic and the Ozaki Press um, for them to be able to put something in there for you. <laughs> You're good. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> Make sure she can see your face. Am I in your way? No. Just don't be in there too close. So because the board, because you know, the time we have our next board meeting, we thought tonight would be a great um, time to honor you and thank you for um, your service to our community and to our district. And um, so we'll be sending that picture along with the press release. And um, you know, apples is something that represents in education a gift that you know is, is wholesome and um, and something from Sweet Trio when you take an apple and chocolate. Um, it just seems to bring the best of both wor worlds together. So um, make sure you take that home to your families. Um, or you could eat it individually and just not tell them, I guess. <laughs> but if they watch the YouTube, then they'll know that you shouldn't have done that. Um, and then last week we had our building rededication ceremony. So I have some pictures here um, at the elementary schools. Um, we had at, um, at Kennedy, we had some people. So we had in the hallway of the new wing for the fourth and fifth graders right outside the LMC. So people that were in the hallway there, um, some of our um, oh, sorry. <laughs> yep, that's okay. You can see some of the student leaders that we had there, some of the fifth graders that took tour, that took people on tours um, throughout the buildings um, after we had some um, um, words and we did a ribbon cutting. And the next picture, I think, is us, is us cutting the ribbons. We had the board there. We had um, students that were holding the ribbon and so forth. And then we moved on from there and went to Woodview. And we used the new um, fourth and fifth grade wing there with that, that new hallway. So the exterior, that's the old exterior. Um, on the right hand side, no matter where you're looking at it, it's the right hand side. Um, and then, so there's people that were there, and then the next picture is our fifth graders um, that were the student helpers there that were very 
I'm proud of that and um, we have a board member and a middle school principal who had kids in that picture um, that were very excited and helpful with people and they were it was great to see the kids excitement of showing people the different spaces and so forth and then we had our ribbon cutting um, that also occurred at Woodview and then um, we had some then we had it was great to see both at Kennedy and Woodview we had a number of retired people um, that came back um, to walk through the classrooms and just see what it was like when I was a teacher in first grade or when I was the art teacher or I was the kindergarten teacher or whatever maybe and then we also had um, Irvin Lusher who was Woodview's first principal so back in 1969 to 1988 he came back and um, and it was great he was um, I showed him Michael's new office and he was like, well, my office was better because it had a window to outside. And when we went to where the remodeled serving area is, he's like, where's the small little door that all that was? And just like, it was really great. Just like, oh, that's right. I forgot how small it was. And so it was great hearing his perspective on a lot of things, you know, seeing the TV in the, in the hallway and so forth. Oh, technology, you know, and, and some of those pieces. So I uh, took a picture with, uh, with Paul and I with him uh, right after the ribbon cutting. And then um, he was talking to Michael and I'm like, we should get a picture of the current principal as well as the first principal um, that we had um, at Woodview. So it was great that he still had great memories um, of serving as, as the principal here. And, um, and it was really, uh, it was a fun night. It was, it was great to see the excitement of our community um, we, had, um, we had we had families that were at the high school now who used to go to Kennedy or used to go to Woodview that wanted to come in. They're like, this is my one chance probably to, to see it. So they brought their high school kids in. Um, even families that had had kids at Woodview that then were at, you know, that wanted to go see Kennedy's uh, place. So they went back and forth. So it was really a, a fun night, an opportunity to showcase um, the, the, the what the building looks like, both the new spaces as well as remodeled spaces. And we look forward to being able to do the same thing um, this coming Friday at the high school. Um, and then, and then uh, last but not least, something that's on here is the Grafton Education Foundation has their Seeds to Harvest annual appeal um, that hopefully you receive something in the mail. And Mary Ellen Hogan is here and she has a couple things to talk about from the Grafton Education Foundation that we make sure the board and our community is aware of. Okay. Um, well, you mentioned the Seeds of Harvest that, that's um, been going out in stages, so um, if you haven't gotten yours, you'll, you'll get it soon. Um, we are on track for the Super Bowl, and we're happy to say that it's going to be back in Grafton this year and the facility that it was in before, which is not a bowling alley, but it is a um, like banquet hall now. And so we're happy to be able to, um, Cedars has been amazing um, to us for the last few years, but we really wanted to have it back in Grafton. And, um, there's a new young team um, that is in charge of it this year, and they have a lot of great new ideas. <coughs> there might be some other games, but there still will be some, there still will be bowls made by the students. So um, then our board has been really busy all summer rewording um, our mission statement and grant proposal guidelines, and um, we developed a separate gift proposal um, that we think is going to work better and um, I'm happy to say um, we just voted last um, Monday night that we would be giving $12,000 to the district for um, hopefully use of the microphones. <laughs> And um, we will be, um, you know, this just happened, so we are happy to be able to do that. And the board um, voted um, because of the FCC regulations and the, um, you know, unforeseen expense the district would incur because of that. Um, we were happy to be able to do that. And um, the fund and need for the next Super Bowl, um, or, yeah, Super Bowl, um, <coughs> they brought some ideas back in the board. Um, there was um, a couple ideas that Aaron said, and we decided to vote on the um, school store here at the high school that we weren't able to finish because of the construction. I understand, mm -hmm. so um, we voted, you know, unanimous, unanimously to um, support that. Um, for our funding aid and hopefully, you know, we can get that up and running and it will be a nice money maker for 
whatever you know, they decide to do a bit store. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, do, you, do you know what the. So that was the hawk's nest. So remember, we've yeah. done some renderings of that, and then with. As we were looking at, we were hoping to have the money left over. It wasn't part of the referendum, but it was something that we, we got a, um, an idea of that would flow along with the concession stand area. So that would be a school store that our students would run, have apparel, have various things like that that students could run as part of their class. And it would be a, um, an opportunity we for... We kind of thinking maybe district-wide, like have you know, all schools that, you know, if they're here for football mm -hmm. games or basketball games, to be able to maybe we can develop some common item that everyone would want, I guess, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so. so um, that's really about it. Yep. Yeah, great. So, the, if, you know, they partner with us in a multitude of ways, and we appreciate their support when, you know, the, the annual appeal is one of their, you know, I think it's one of their bigger fundraisers that you yes. have. Yes, it um, goes on for, you know, we send it out now, mm -hmm. and um, they take donations as long as we can get them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They don't turn it, you don't turn it away after a certain time? No, no. Um, and, um, So I wanted to make sure we highlighted that in my report as well. Okay, and with that, that concludes the superintendent's report. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you very much for that update on the Grafton Education Foundation. I think uh, it's interesting to hear in both of those reports, uh, you know, the new energetic members. As you think about membership right. of the GEF, the, old are <laughs> <laughs> the, the tenured people are passing on their wisdom and their knowledge to the new people. Um, and and I, on behalf of the entire board, certainly thank you to administration. Uh, it, it isn't for the paycheck, I doubt, but anybody is sitting up here. Uh, thank you to the community as well for the support that they've shown relative to the referendum and relative just to the kids in general as uh, everyone is pulling in the same direction to bring about better results for kids. So thanks, Jeff. Okay, committee reports. So all of the committees met last Monday on the 17th. So we'll start with the Finance Committee. So yes, uh, at the Finance Committee, we had representatives from Horton there to go over our um, employee insurance plans, where we're at, where the renewals are coming in. Um, they will be approved at the October meeting with the budget, but um, they have a 2% increase for medical, 0% for dental and 2% for vision. You know, I would like to say a lot of that is a result of good participation from our employees in the wellness program. And so that resulted in a, a good savings um, with a minimal increase to our health care. So. Good. Thank you, Mark. Policy Committee, Steve. Um, policy also, on September 17th, we had two agenda items. Um, we continued our discussion on policy 830, which is public use and facility. Um, I think we've kind of come to an agreement that we're going to look at a fifth category, um, and administration is going to go back and try to look at um, how we would draft some agreements um, to be consistent with other school districts in the area um, for the, the facility use um, with that. So um, we do not have our next agenda for our next meeting scheduled at this point, so at some point we'll come back once that gets done, but probably will not be the month of October, might be in November. Um, the second item that we had was a new update um, this Thursday, uh, Jeff will be having a kickoff meeting um, with them um, to start laying out that plan, and then uh, but shortly thereafter, somewhere in October, we'll be starting an actual meetings for uh, putting that all into place. That we have that for the end of the school year. So, those are two updates for our meeting. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Steve. Last but not least, Mark, back to you for public private partnership. So yeah, we had two items on the agenda that evening too. We were looking at um, either do we utilize an existing foundation or establish our own, and that is still, I would say, an open item to resolve. The second was kind of the organizational structure to carry this forward, which is actually coming on a future agenda item uh, under item D. So we'll touch on it there. All right. Thank you. Any questions relative to any of the committee? meetings and work thanks everyone then moving on to the personnel report yeah 
It's just so we have, um, we have none that are for approval, but they are the informational ones that we want to make the board aware of. Um, we have uh, Glenn, Glenn Felderbrook, who is our welcome desk, um, now with the, um, uh, the new entrance that we have at the high school. Uh, we needed a, a welcome person there. So Gwen is at the welcome desk at the high school. And then um, we have Leslie Hochstadter, library media aide at Kennedy. Stacy Mose, library media aide at Grafton High School. Crystal pa um, Palipski, special ed aide at Kennedy. Patricia Strand, special ed aide at Grafton High School. Tierra Whiteside, special ed aide at Grafton High School. And then our resignations, which we appreciate their service that they've given to us over the years, is Betty Sabolka, library and media aide at Kennedy, and Michelle Wagner, who is library and media aide here at Grafton High School. So informational for the board. Thank you. Uh, going back then to facilities planning, enhancing our future. I, I Mark, this is your item from B3 there. So, Jeff, who's taking this one? <laughs> Sure. So, um, so as 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 Mark mentioned, we spent a lot of time at the public-private partnership committee um, developing a um, steering committee that would move us forward with our facilities planning. So, um, we are looking at facilities planning and using the slogan of enhancing our future. Um, so, we think of our current budget, our 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 20-year maintenance plan as protecting our future, and we look at this opportunity as enhancing our future. So the things that we need that aren't covered in our regular budget. So right now we would look at our athletic fields. So we've done some work with athletic fields. We've also done some work, some preliminary work looking at our auditorium. So we know the, those are two, two areas that need some um, enhancements. Um, that would not be coming in our regular budget. And so um, this steering committee would be, be created in order to um, privately raise funds to be able to fund the priorities that would go with that. This would all be, um, the steering committee would be working towards projects and project priorities that are approved by the school board. Um, and then you can see the members of the steering committee would be the district superintendent as the chair, director of business services, um, two board of education members, and a chamber of commerce member. And then the larger group would be the advisory committee and membership, and that would be relative to specific projects. Um, so um, th that, that could include, you can see the following, there's a list of members of the advisory committee based on a specific project, so whether it's in the academic, the athletics, the, the arts, or in other, um, and there'd be other people that could be added. Um, you know, the final thing is other is applicable, could be multiple people that would come onto that advisory committee piece, um, depending on what the, the, the area is that we're looking to enhance. So at, at this time, I, just to recap, the, the uh, public-private partnership ad hoc committee of the board was, was formed to determine and flesh out a structure upon which we could engage the community for purposes of identifying projects and then soliciting mm -hmm. funds relative to those projects. I think the ad hoc committee has now met its obligations and its goals, and as such, that committee would be dissolved and this new steering committee uh, would take over from that committee. So I think it would be appropriate that there be a motion uh, to adopt this structure as presented as it relates to the formation of a steering committee and related membership for the facilities planning, enhancing our future. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Thank you and thank you to the members of the ad hoc committee for their work in moving it to this point. And I know some of you have volunteered to serve on that committee. I'll be working with Jeff as we look to fill that committee out. Okay, personnel report. Uh, we did that. We did D as well. Unusually hazardous transportation plan update. Yes. Item E. Yes, so um, we last updated our unusual, <coughs> unusually hazardous transportation plan um, back in 2015. We, uh, as we redrew boundaries and created two, two bound, boundaries for two schools versus three, we created new bus routes that resulted from this, and we also ended up getting new walking routes. And so what happened at the beginning of this year there were a group of families that lived on the east side of the Milwaukee River within a mile of Kennedy that would need to cross Bridge Street over the Milwaukee River. And they reached out um, saying that they felt that this, would, this was a bit of a, of a hazard to walk across that route. So we looked into it 
we noted that the where Falls Road crosses the Milwaukee River, which has very similar um, aspects to it with just one sidewalk on one side of the bridge crossing the river, we felt that these were very similar. We also note that we had never examined um, Bridge Street before because it had never been a route to any school. The boundary that was formed when we had Grafton Elementary meant that if you lived on the east side of the river, you would walk to Grafton Elementary. You didn't have to cross the river. And then same thing, if you lived on the west side of the river, you would walk to Kennedy. You wouldn't have to cross that river there. Whereas Falls Road, down in that area, being to the south, there were families who were in the Kennedy zone that would have had to have walked across the river, the bridge, uh, to, get to, to get to school. Um, and, and now with the re, re, redistricting, there are families who are going to Kennedy that now have to cross bridge, and that was never a walking route before. So we are, uh, as a district, it is a, a new location right at the end of the plan attached in your packet, location N, that would designate uh, Bridge Street where it crosses the Milwaukee River to be part of our uh, hazardous transportation plan. Those families who uh, would have to cross the river would be eligible for, eligible for busing, and we would also be eligible to receive aid for those students that we bus. So we are looking for a recommendation to update our UHT plan. So we have a motion. I make the motion to update. Is there a second? second. All right. Any further discussion? I was just curious, um, now that there is a crossing guard and Woodview has been redone, crossing fifth, I noticed there's a crossing guard there daily. Is that still a hazardous area? That that's certainly something we could examine moving forward. Mm -hmm. It is currently part of our uh, hazardous transportation plan. The next step for us in this process is to meet with the sheriff and to show the sheriff the, the, the updated N, and we, we can bring that forward and ask that question as well. Mm -hmm. So this goes to the sheriff and then DPI, is that what I was reading? Yes, so this will be submitted upon your approval, submitted to the sheriff for review. <coughs> Once the sheriff signs off on it, it goes to DPI uh, for their sign off. Here, you're talking about the one south of the school, right? Or north? North. Right. Because still the neighborhood past that has no sidewalk. So it would just be for like the Deerwood Court. Yeah. And Uncle Ashton. That makes sense. As long as there's a. Yeah, because yeah, in previous years there's never a crossing guard, but I noticed that there's now a crossing guard there. Mm -hmm. So it's a much easier crossing for those children. Any further discussion? And then all those in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed? Certainly, thank you for the work that you've done in taking a look at this. And, and well. I want to thank also, uh, you know, those that may have been impacted by this change and bringing it to our attention. Um, but a lot of new things this year and a lot of new things that perhaps hadn't been looked at in the past that need to be looked at for the first time and engaging in the dialogue respectfully with all of our kids, you know, with everyone who has kids coming to the school. We all want the same thing. We're all out for you know, the, making sure that everybody's safe. So when those items can be brought forward, um, and we can engage in a dialogue, we can have good things happen. So thank you very much, and thanks for taking a look at it. Okay, Summer Learning Academy report. Yes, and Laura Stouts, our Director of Pupil Services, will come and give us an update on that. All right, I get to summarize the Summer Learning Academy, even though I wasn't right. here for it. So <laughs> next year I'll have some more firsthand experience to, to share with you. Okay, okay. so there were 24 Can, can I interrupt classes. you really quick? I'm sorry. Did they vote? Did they vote on uh, the motion? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> That's good. Till Fry's question. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe they didn't. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Okay. Good job. Sorry, Laura. Right. Continue, please. I'm sorry. My apologies. Twenty-four academic yes. classes, math and reading for grades uh, kindergarten through fifth, and then we had uh, some intervention for elementary age, and then we also had credit recovery at the high school for English, math, and social studies. 
a uh, couple new things this summer. The intervention class was extended from four weeks to six weeks, which I understand most kids took advantage of. And then there was also a class that was specially designed for kids with more significant disabilities that was discontinued this summer. They decided to try to get them to take more enrichment classes with their peers. There was more aid support provided to them. Um, it was just an opportunity for them to have more peer modeling and more inclusion. And the feedback that they received from both families and from teachers was really positive. So we also had 160 enrichment classes, 39 of which were brand new. So this really robust uh, summer program saw an increase both in the student enrollment and then also the number of courses taken. So we had 49 additional students enrolled this year and we had 653 more courses taken. Just like a nice jump. So if you look at the back side, we kind of have a nice graphic of um, both the number of students enrolled and the courses taken since the summer of 2011. Any questions that I could answer? It's a really good, solid program. Thank you very much. We will bring at the October meeting, we'll bring the FTE from that. That just hasn't been calculated because of the budget and so forth. So we'll be bringing that. We wanted to get these numbers in front of you because Laura says there's a, a great increase and great to see people taking advantage of our summer academy um, in that way. Okay, gift reports. We have two gift reports. Mm -hmm. We do. So I have, I have two of them. One is from an anonymous donor of donating um, granite countertops uh, valued um, to be $1,000. Um, and then one that is a contract that is um, uh, 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 something for John Long Middle School that they're using with 14 foods. Um, and what and Brett Dimmer has worked with this for I believe their PBIS where they they'd be able to receive 450 free small cone coupons um, for students who reach their reading or math goals um, 72 achievement awards for weekly PBIS drawings in the value of $215 and then 18 buy one get one 99 cent blizzard coupons and 99 cent chicken strip baskets um, for teachers who recognize students for PBIS so the total value is um, $1,200 they put an ad in the Falcon Flyer four times a year um, but because it is a contract and we are bringing it to the board for approval before we move forward at the middle school. So one is a donation, one is a contract um, that we need board approval for. Um, we take them independently or to I, I would probably say they should be independent because one's a donor that will send a, a thank, thank you. you. Even though it's anonymous donor, we knew that is. We send a, a thank you to that person, thanking them for supporting our programs, and the other is a contract. So then I'd entertain a motion to accept the anonymous gift of granite countertops in the value of approximately $1,000. So move. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed? And that passes. Then also entertain a motion to um, approve the contract for 14 foods as presented. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed? And that passes as well. Always good to see donations. We certainly thank those who are doing as such. And I'm sure Jamie has a good spot for these. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Student overnight trip request. So we have two, two for the board to approve. One is um, an academic one and one is an athletic one. The one is the First one we'll talk about is the Fred Stern Celebration Jazz Festival at, at Lawrence University. Um, and you can see Ms. Hart, who is the jazz teacher, as well as her husband would be the chaperone um, for that group. It's on Saturday, November 3rd and Sunday, November 4th. Um, so it's a Fred Sturm Celebration Jazz Weekend hosted by Lawrence University. Um, is was started by Lawrence Eastman Professor Fred Sturm and provides students the opportunity to perform for, listen to, and study with professional jazz educators and performers from around the world. So um, Lawrence University is in Appleton. Um, so we would ask for approval for that, as well as then the Boys and Girls Cross Country overnight trip to Blue Harbor and I think it's, is it Manitowoc? It says Manny, Manitou, um, that they do. This is a twofold for the cross country team. Um, they have an inter-squad cross country race. And, um, and then they use, also use as a team bonding experience for the athletes. So we've attached the roster, and you can see that per board policy, we do have both male and female chaperones also going along on the trip. So we'd ask for the board approval for these two trips. 
motion to that effect? So moved. Okay. Any discussion, questions? All right, seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, aye. 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 Opposed? Passed. Thank you, Jim. And finally, construction updates. Yes, yeah, so good news. Uh, the pool is back in use. Swimmers had practice tonight in there for the first time. Um, so they will still have the opportunity to host two meets um, as well as the conference meet at the end of the season. Um, so it's great for our student athletes as well as our um, students in Fayette and our community to be able to start utilizing the pool. Um, uh, deconstruction of Grafton Elementary School has begun. Um, we do have some GES bricks that are available um, out by the tennis court. Um, Spielvogel will be dumping some tomorrow. Um, it's right across from the tennis courts in the old parking lot, um, in the west parking lot by the tennis courts. Um, we have had some requests from people either calling or emailing asking about the fill um, that's being stored there and that's act that fill is actually being reused. It's fill that we've used or even uh, that others have dropped there from other sites. Um, that once they take the concrete up and they take up um, the basement at GES, we're gonna have to fill that back in before we put the asphalt down. So it's a savings for us to be able to store it there and that'll be used in that way. So it isn't um, that we even have people in the office laughing that they could use it at their house. And we are like, well, that's not what it's there for. Um, but we did appreciate people reaching out and asking. So that will fill in that footprint um, and so forth. Um, district office, um, uh, so the parking, we were moved from where we typically park um, in that west parking lot and it was more, um, I guess the, the east side of that um, to now we're parking where you used to have the parking for a GES and then in the middle of this week, probably by Wednesday or Thursday, parking for district office will be right where there used to be grass, right by the sign. So if you go down by there now, they've, they've dug out a couple of feet of dirt. Uh, they started laying some gravel at the end of the night. Um, it's basically the connector from the, as the high school parking lot comes down and now the driveway goes down and around, it will actually connect the district office. So you'll be able to access this side from 60 or an emergency vehicle come from the high school and get the district office more quickly instead of having to go around or trying to jump out on 60 and come back in. Um, so that will become the parking area for a little while as they get ready for tearing up the parking lot um, and the green space there um, as they create the, um, the, the, the new area that they'll have there. So a couple different things that are happening that you can see. Jamie has some more pieces to update us on as well that may not be as easily seen. So uh, starting this week, uh, all Crandall and Associates from Grafton will be replacing the remaining uh, roof sections at Kennedy. So that will take a minimum of three weeks. Um, hoping in the next two to three weeks, we start taking occupancy of the new maintenance space. So that will give us the ability to unload the remaining two semi-trailers and several pods that are out there. Um, that's an important piece for us getting ready for the winter time, staging all of our equipment. And uh, last, um, we have a new cleaning service. Starting this season off, uh, school year off with the cleaning service, extremely happy. There will be some growing pains, but um, at this point, we're very happy and they're responding well to us. And we're on track for the, the parking lot. I should have said this as a follow-up, but we're on track for the parking lot. Um, for district office and for the high school parking to be finished by the end of, 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 of October. Um, as we look at um, asphalt plants shutting down in that November time frame, um, they have it set for curbing to be coming in, I think that first week in, in, in October. And then I think it's the third or fourth week of, of October is when we're lucky we have a date already set to pour some asphalt. So um, they poured asphalt today um, in front of the new commons area going around to the backside. So for our emergency vehicles, um, and we're on track for that to be available. The high school right now has, has a shortage of parking for students, and so we're hoping to be able to have that as we get into November for those students to be able to utilize, um, and then even for athletic events and other concerts that we'll be having over the winter season um, as well that will be available. Um, we're on track for that. There's multiple projects that are still ongoing um, that, are, that are occurring in, in the district, um, but um, uh, there should be a minimal disruption to student learning at this point. Um, and um, and we're, um, we, we should have, by the end of the month, we should have our punch list for the elementary schools um, should be completed. You know, the high school is probably more in that December, January time frame um, with a number of uh, um, things that are going on um, at the high school with flooring or with various other projects that need to occur. Um, um, it'll be later in the year when that's fully finished, but we're moving forward getting a punch list in those areas. Any questions on the construction update? 
large things are holding to the schedule that Hoffman has been proposing? They are at this point. Okay. Okay, good. All right. Then I would, no other questions, I'd entertain a motion to convene into closed session to consider one, sponsorship negotiations, two, deliberation or negotiation of the purchasing of public properties, and three, a parent request involving social and personal history. This is in accordance with Wisconsin State Statutes 19851E and F. We have a motion. Second. Jerry, how do you vote? Yes. 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 And yes. Thank you.